risk researcher and I had to take the risk to be the last speaker today. I would like to challenge you with this talk. I think we have heard so many wonderful talks today, right? Yes. And now I would like to challenge you to step up and take the next step. Because what I know for sure as a risk researcher, it's time to stand up and act. We know enough. I'm a scientist, I can tell you that. Well, I would like today give a short insight into my work as a risk researcher by starting to telling you how we as humans tend to act when we are confronted with difficult situations. We have three simple mechanisms to deal with threats. First, we can play dead, laying on the ground and hoping that the problem will be solved over time. Second, we can run away as fast as we can, hoping that we will be fast enough. And third, we can attack and fight. Unfortunately, sometimes we are still doing that, especially while we are confronted with risks and challenges like climate change, air pollution, and loss of biodiversity. And as you can imagine, these old strategies won't work anymore. So what I would like to tell you today is that we have the time right now to take the shift, as was said before. Instead of playing dead and laying on the ground, we really have to be conscious about the impact we can make. Instead of running away, we really have to commit ourselves. And instead of attacking and fighting each other, blaming each other, we really have to connect. I just would like to give you a short idea of my work. And don't be afraid, I don't want to confront you with data. I just would like to give you an insight of my work, which I love the most is facilitating stakeholder dialogues, which means we brought together people from different backgrounds and different competences, like people from industry and people from NGO, people from ministries and also from civil society and science. And it was always a pleasure for me to create the space where we can take different perspectives on different arguments. Because that is what we really need. Then we stop fighting against each other and starting understanding and then connecting with each other. What I really loved about my work is it was kind of crazy at the beginning. Because people tend to stay in their roles, we all know that. We are trained to be a scientist. We are trained to be someone who presents the economy. And people from economy tend to avoid sitting next to someone from NGO, as you can imagine. And also people from the ministry sometimes took me aside, whispering in my ear, are you really sure that people from civil society will cooperate? And sometimes scientists said, well, you know, the problems are that complex. I'm not so sure if that is a good idea to talk with other people about that. Well, that is exactly the problem we are today dealing with. We don't take the time and the space to reflect on the other arguments people have and see the good and reasonable in that. And that is why I kind of get a little bit here an idea of taking the risk 
to step outside of the scientific community, where I had the opportunity to facilitate these stakeholder dialogues and created good results. What, what, what frustrates me over time is that we created good results, but within the role of a scientist, I couldn't make an impact with that. And the problem was that these good results sometimes were left in a drawer and I didn't have an influence on what can happen with that. So I take the risk and stepped a little bit outside of the scientific community and found myself surrounded with books from entrepreneurship and also from personal development. Because my question was how we can make things happen and what kind of personality do we need to do that together. And what I found out is that if we really would like to make a difference, then we have to start within ourselves, which does not mean that it is easy. I'm sorry. But I'm more than ever convinced that if we really would like to make a change on the next level, then we have to first confront us with ourselves, trying to grow in something or someone who is able to deal with complexities and uncertainties and also ambiguities, because the problems we face today have different perspectives and different arguments. I just would like to give you an idea how that, what I found out while reading these different kind of spokes on entrepreneurship and um, on personal development while still being a scientist. I found out that we have at the very last end to connect two key points if we would like to go further. Imagine I'm standing here on a line and I'm standing here on a low level of self-esteem and self-trust and I'm going here on a higher level on that. Which grows is that I'm more and more capable of dealing what really matters to myself, my true self. I take responsibility. Let's imagine there's another line starting from here and it's called the line of belonging to greater vision, to something that matters to us. And here's also the low level, going to a high level of belonging. What I found out during the last 10 years is this. If people have a low level of self-responsibility and also a low level of being connected to something that is greater than ourselves, then they tend to play dead if they were confronted with challenging situations. Because they don't feel the trust in themselves that they are able to deal with that. And then they don't have the connection to a greater vision, so they don't get energized with enough energy to act. If people have a high level of self-esteem and self-responsibility, without being connected to a greater vision, then they tend to act what I call the me, me, me factor. Yes, it's, they are on a high level of willingness to act, but they don't are connected to others, to their community, maybe also to their family, and to a greater vision. If people are standing in this direction, on a high level of belonging, but still on a low level of self-esteem, yes, then they are connected with a greater vision, but the problem is they don't take the next step. And they blame others or say others should do the problem, as should solve the problem. That was where I was in some kind standing there. I had a greater vision for us, 
but I don't know where to start. And I don't have the self-esteem to really get out and act. What I've learned while I was growing, while learning through books and seminars, is this, that there is kind of magic happening when you are deciding to grow into your true self, into your true and unique greatness, which we all have. There are so many people around you that will help you. They will challenge you to give the very, very best. And the wonderful thing is, what I love the most is that there are people, they really want to mentor you, and at the same time, they ask you for help and support. And there's nothing more fulfilling than helping others to grow. And that's what I really would love to challenge you today. You all have something unique inside of you. And you all have so many capabilities to save the world, to help something, to make a difference. And you are not here in this wonderful event just to listen. I'm much more than ever convinced that especially you who are sitting here, are able to deal with difficult questions. And if you have a high level of self-esteem and self-trust and self-responsibility on the one hand, and you are connected to a greater vision, then you have the connection to your true unique, but also to being united with others. Just imagine for a second where are standing you right now in this kind of concept. And where do you want to grow into? Well, you might ask yourself, sounds cool, but where should I start? Then I would like to just let you know how I started. It's not about taking huge steps. It's more about taking small steps, but again and again and again. You can reach so much more if you continue taking step after step. And yes, there will be difficult situations, definitely. And they will challenge you and they prove you how serious you are. <laughs> and I would tell you this, what I've learned is, as Jim Rohn said, a desire without urgency loses its value. And I'm talking here also about something which can be divided in two key different points. It's the price and the value. Which price are we willing to pay? And what is the price that stands behind it? What is the value? I've, I think we have seen so many wonderful pictures of this world today. And we are all paying a very, very high price if we don't act. And I know that we have definitely all the capacities to step into our true greatness and give the world our very, very best. And at the same time, step into what we really want to value and be willing to really pay the price for that. Because it is worth the price, definitely. That I'm standing here in front of you, on this wonderful stage, was never ever planned. Definitely not. But what I've paid is the price. And I've met people that believed in me and that challenged me. And here in this audium are sitting people who believed in me and that gave me the power to stand in front of you. And that is 
What I would like to tell you today is, I believe in all of you, definitely. And there are so many people who believe in you. So take the next step and act. We don't have time to wait. The world needs us to stand up. I would like to thank you for being here and wish you all the best to take the risk that matters to you. Thank you.